The other day, I came across an Instagram profile slash it was sent to me, and it was a post about bisexual lighting, which I am super into the idea of. And as I got further into this rabbit hole, I have discovered the depths of Wikipedia Instagram page, which is where that post came from. And I am very excited to have Annie join the podcast. Afternoon podcast. Hello, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you? Great. I'm doing good. This is the Hacker Noon Podcast, and my name is Amy Tom. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining. So today, I want to get into more about your Instagram page. First, can you tell me what the premise is, what it's about, and when you started it? Absolutely. So I was a sophomore in college when COVID happened. And so staying at home left me with a lot of free time. Mm -hmm. And it was like the stage where everyone was baking bread, making projects, like retiling their bathroom. And I just like decided to start documenting weird Wikipedia articles on Instagram. Um, it's been done before. Like there's a subreddit, there's like a small Facebook group, but I, I feel like finding things that are like short enough to be shareable and like weird enough to be super interesting hadn't really been done in this way on Instagram. And so mm -hmm. I was super excited, like over the course of the pandemic, it really took off and now it's kind of my life. So I just like every day we'll post yeah. things like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of some good ones. Trout tickling. You can tickle trout and send them into a trance. The whole Wikipedia article about it. Desire paths. Oh when people like don't use the sidewalk and instead like make their own trails that are more direct. There's a name for it. Um, there was a straw hat riot when people wore straw hats in 1922 past the day that they were like socially acceptable um, and people died. So I really just like finding like weird corners of Wikipedia, like celebrating what I think is the best website on the internet. And I'm so glad that like 360 something thousand people on Instagram like it too. Yeah. Okay. This is wild because you have grown the page so much. So you started posting early 2020 then ish. April, yeah. 2020. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it has grown like crazy. Was there a particular post or moment that really accelerated your growth? That's a good question. I think that the early days of Instagram pages that eventually become viral are always like really interesting to hear mm -hmm. about. Um, cause I like now follow a formula. Like I post things that are very interesting or weird and then I just like let people comment and whatever. But back then I didn't really have as much of a formula. So I would sometimes post things that were like kind of more boring or dry. Like I just didn't really care. I didn't really have an audience. Um, I remember one post that did do really well was a picture of a cow named Emily who was famous for like escaping slaughter and running around and a newspaper reported that she was seen running with a deer. Um, that one went around and then this influencer <laughs> named Caroline Calloway shared some of my posts. Um, so I got a bunch of followers from that. And since then it's been like pretty steady and exponential growth. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. Um, I have so many questions about the depths of Wikipedia and <laughs> what do you have a favorite page on Wikipedia? Okay, that's such a hard question. Like they're all my favorite, but <laughs> um, my favorite picture slash caption is this cow. It's in the cow tipping article and the caption is a cow lying on her side is not paralyzed. She can rise whenever she chooses. I liked it because it felt very like like the epitome of the early quarantine mindset. Yes. Um, but there's so many good articles. Wait, do you also love cows? I do. I've mentioned cows <laughs> twice. Like, I do really okay, like yes, cows. I, I promise I'm not cows. obsessed. <laughs> no, I'm obsessed with cows. This is great. I love cows. They're the, they're the best. They're so good. I, they're so they're soft. They are really cute, actually, in person, I feel. Um, mm -hmm. They're just, they're just the best. I love them. What other exciting cow facts do you have for me then? 
Oh my gosh, off the top of my head, you're really putting me on the spot here. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. Okay, so I told you about the cow tipping article, which is really interesting. Emily the cow who escaped slaughter was really cool. Um shoot, I don't have anything great off the top of my head, but oh, give damn. me give me another okay. topic and I can try my best. <laughs> damn. I mean, I just think that there's probably like so many Wikipedia pages about cows that exists. And this is why like your Instagram page like really blows my mind because like when you just really think about this, like the amount of Wikipedia pages that exists, it's really blowing my mind. It's crazy. How many do you know how many there are? Um Oh my gosh. Okay, sorry. So there is a page that's called list of individual bovines that describes like Ooh. lists all the individual cows that were important enough to get their own Wikipedia page. <laughs> I'm looking through them right now and it's crazy. Like there's this one named Code Blue who was a bucking bull. There's uh, Grady the cow who was stuck inside a storage silo on a farm and got in the news <laughs> for that. Um, here's one with a funny name, Elm Farm Ollie. Uh, the first cow to fly in an airplane. Oh my gosh. Oh, so wow. This is like kind of an amazing page, a list of individual bovines. <laughs> Cows are the best, man. I feel Someone like needs to have a depth of so like to... tragic. Like they always look kind of sad. Yes. I am harsh advocating now for you to create a depths of cow Wikipedia page, <laughs> which is just about cows. <laughs> yes. Because how niche would that be? I'm so sorry. I'm having these like technical difficulties right now where, um, where it's freezing up a bit. Keep right? starting. Yeah, I feel it too. Okay, it's okay. We can edit this. <laughs> Uh-uh. I can't even hear you now. Audio. Oh, I can hear you. Okay, can you hear me? I'm going to try to disable yep. Siri because maybe it's something with the mic, but I... Mm can't get Siri to stop um <laughs> she's just keeps talking to me so I'm so sorry about that no I think I just turned her off I'm so, I'm so sorry <laughs> no totally fine we'll just cut it up that's why we right. have an editor <laughs> okay good <laughs> okay cool 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 so I wanted to ask you then about like creating a niche Instagram page how niche do you think would be too niche you know what I mean? Because your Instagram page is like, it is pretty niche in the sense of like Instagram page is like what kind of content you're posting, but it has so many different facets of like interests that you could target. How do you decide what is too specific or, you know, are, do you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> yeah, I think that like deciding what to post is um, something that I've definitely gotten better at mm -hmm. over the year and a half. Um, because for things to be like appealing for, for a viewer, they have to be at least in some sense relatable to their life. Like people aren't going to share something on their story if it's just like a mildly interesting fact, but people do really like to share things that allow them to say like, this is so me. So like the mm -hmm. desire path, the idea of like, it's just such a human thing. Like you don't use the sidewalk because there's a faster way and eventually you make your own trail. Like there's something kind of poetic in that. And I think people yeah. like that aspect. Like um, there's like this like relatable um, part of it. Also posts with animals tend to do really well. Like things that are like mm -hmm. charming and elicit emotions. Those are good. Um, right. Things that I don't really post very much of are things that are like, just not really broadly relatable like mm -hmm. 
too dark or like too political or stuff like that? There's yes, like there's that. And then there's also things where it's like people send me like in my DMs, interesting facts. And it's like, okay, like this is sort of interesting. Yes. But like, it's just not interesting to people who don't have prior knowledge about the topic. Mm -hmm. Um, I gotta think of some examples. You really have to like know your audience so well then. So how do you engage with them? How do you get to know them? How do you get to understand what people are most interested in? Definitely by like Instagram's metrics. Um, I can see what people comment. Um, I can see like, you know, if people like DM me things afterwards or how much they like them and how Mm -hmm. much they share them. So that's always pretty interesting. And yeah. obviously, like, Wikipedia, like, like the real glory is not the curation, but it's like the people that actually are writing these articles. And I'm an, like, I edit Wikipedia, but I'm not like, like a diehard editor. Like, there are some amazing, like, super, super experienced Wikipedia editors that are just doing such good work. And like, yes, I like will add sentences here or there or like fix a citation or whatever. But like, I feel like the real like beauty of the page is the the Wikipedia editors that are writing all this stuff for strangers to read. Yeah. So, okay, then let's talk about how it works more because like in, I guess I don't have like extreme knowledge of how Wikipedia works in my mind. It's like an online directory that anybody can edit, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there are like specific people who are like diehard Wikipedia editors that like don't get paid, but just like, like to edit pages. Exactly. Like there is is by a, a few years ago, an estimate was that the biggest Wikipedia editors were like the small group of three to 5,000 people, which is a lot, but considering that it's global, is really not as many as you might expect. Um, there are like many more casual editors. Um, and then if you count everyone who's ever edited a Wikipedia article, it's probably a lot bigger. Mm-hmm. But I guess what's surprising to me is that anyone can edit, but not a lot of people do edit. Um, and the way it works is you make an account, but you don't even have to, you could just edit from your IP address and you don't have to have an account. Um, and then like, if you're really brand new, like there's increased scrutiny because it's like, if you're going to be vandalizing a page, like do you, I don't know, people will want to like, you know, be careful if it's a brand new person. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah. And then once you make more and more edits, you get more and more privileges. Um, there are certain topics that are very like controversial, for example, Donald Trump abortion, like just hot topics where you might have people trying to push an agenda and Wikipedia should not be a place where you can push an agenda. agenda. So Mm -hmm. pages like the, like that are Mm -hmm. locked for new editors. And so you have Mm -hmm. to kind of prove yourself and then you can edit. And one big issue that I should mention in terms of Wikipedia is the fact that the editor base is largely white, largely English speaking, largely Mm -hmm. male. And so there are some current efforts, which are really amazing to try to get more female editors, more POC editors, more like international editors that have like in like amazing knowledge about these like very specific things that we can put on Wikipedia in different languages. So overall, like it's just this like machine that works on the power of like very smart, very dedicated, um, just like extremely diligent volunteers, which is so amazing. I feel like it's like Mm -hmm. the way the internet was supposed to be. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just find it really interesting that everybody volunteers. Wikipedia as an organization, do they pay people? Right? They do, right? They have the Wikimedia Foundation Mm -hmm. and there are full-time employees, but the editors are unpaid. Mm, okay. And how would you just, des- what would you describe your editorial status as? A casual My editor? Is, yeah. Yeah. I would call myself like a casual editor. Like I fix typos here and there. I'll like have a passion and I'll like look on Wikipedia and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe they didn't mention this. And then I'll look at the talk page and I'll either like say like, oh, we should talk about this. Or I'll just like, if it's something chill and like simple, I'll just directly edit or I'll like add a citation. Sometimes citations don't work. Like you'll click on the citation and you'll be like, oh my gosh, this is a, a dead link. Like this doesn't work. And so I'll sometimes like clean stuff up like that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I think it would be amazing if I were like hardcore and like started doing like really like meaty edits, like making a bunch of new pages and like oh, cutting yeah. a bunch of random fat. But right now, just based on like my time availability and stuff, I, um, I do more small edits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What kind of people are the people that do these big edits? Um, I don't know. It's really hard. Cause like Wikipedia isn't an organization mm -hmm. where you're all together very often. Like mm -hmm. it's just people at their computers, like remotely. Yeah. What, what is your experience like with the culture of Wikipedia? Cause you're like in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wikipedia, like they, they like me as far as I know, like they're definitely not <laughs> angry that I have like kind of like made an Instagram and TikTok about yeah. them. Um, like if they have like new initiatives or like Wikimedia Foundation events or like a new filter or whatever, they'll sometimes be like, Hey, can you post about this? So I'm oh, all about cool. it. I think it's yeah. Funny. I hadn't, I had an edit a thon a couple of months ago, um, which was exciting to get more people editing. So yeah, I love Wikipedia. Cool. All right. Yeah. Exciting. And Let's go back to the Instagram page then, because I have some more questions about like how you grew your audience. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not very good at growing an Instagram following, I don't think. Like it's not really my strong suit. Um, so what do you think that your secret to success was? Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know if there was like a single secret. Um, probably the fact that it was quarantine. I had a lot of time and my summer internship got canceled. So mm -hmm. I just spent like a lot of time on Wikipedia and then addition additionally I would like follow people that I thought would like the page um so I was just like okay like irreverent young people who like mm -hmm. to learn so I would go to like college pages and like see like who are really active users who appear to be in college and I would follow them and a lot of times they would follow back um yeah so I would do that okay. how else did I grow the page um I DM'd a lot of people that I thought were cool and a lot of people that like I think are cool probably are like sort of aligned with like the vibe of the page. So some of them would follow back and like if they had big platforms and started resharing the posts, then um, you start reaching a lot of people. So I don't know if there's like a secret sauce. I know a lot of people, a lot of people on Instagram will grow in like really weird ways like they'll mm -hmm. have post notifications on like meme pages and then immediately comment and then they'll comment well their comment will like get a lot of attention yeah. or people oh. will like um tag a lot of people in posts like tag famous mm -hmm. people to try to get them to notice yeah so I don't know if there's any single way I know that's the problem I'm confused about the algorithm how do I master the algorithm do you think Big that question. it's the hashtagging that you do? Is it your engagement? Like, I don't know. I never do hashtags. Um, oh. so I can't really speak to hashtags. Like I'm, I'm sure they're Have good you for some people. Have never ever done hashtags or you don't do it anymore? Um, I'm sure I've done like some here and there, yeah. but, but that's just not been a part of your strategy. It's just not part of my strategy. I just, I don't okay. know. I just, yeah. Okay. And uh, what is your engagement like with your audience? Like, how well do you know them? <laughs> That's a great question. I think I like have people that like comment regularly and yeah. you see their name all the time or whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of people that I feel like I'm friends with because they'll respond a bunch or comment a bunch. But then in reality, yeah. I'm like, OK, we're not actually friends. Like, we just yeah. have been having this like online camaraderie for a year. Um, but I think that there are definitely people that will comment on like almost every post um, and to see that there's a community, even if it's a kind of small, like just commenting community, that is so, 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 so fun for me. Um, girl, your community is huge. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think that's true. It's like, you know, hundreds of thousands of people yeah. following, but then the commenters, like the, like, you know, okay, like the yeah. tight core of like mm -hmm. really, really frequent commenters, like that's mm -hmm. probably in the hundreds. Yeah, that's still amazing like, you're doing great <laughs> i wanted to ask you too about your website and how you have merch <laughs> yeah so i started selling mugs to pay for my college um because i was just like wow i spend literally all my time working on this yeah instagram page and i also have like you know thousands of dollars to pay for college 
So I'm not in it to like cash out in any way, but it's yeah. just like great that I could sell mugs with funny Wikipedia articles, give yes. like a big portion of profits back to Wikipedia, and then also like pay off college. That is so amazing. And like that really gives power to the fact that you have done such a good job of growing your audience and that they're like willing to spend the money to support you, um, which is like so, so great. Yeah. That's super cool. What do you have planned next for Depths of Wikipedia? What's coming up? <laughs> um, That's a good question. I've been making TikToks more. I feel like TikTok is like exciting to me because mm-hmm. the reach can be so big and the growth can be so fast. Um, so that's really fun. Yeah. Um, How's your experience been growing on that platform? It's so different. Like it's so different. Um. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's like sometimes I'll post something that I think is really good and it'll get a thousand views. And then sometimes I'll post something that I think is really dumb and it'll get a million views. So it feels very unpredictable. I also don't really know my audience. Like the people that are commenting, like they, it's very likely that they just saw it in their for you page and don't really Mm -hmm. know what it is. Whereas Instagram, it's like, if you're seeing it, it's pretty likely that you're already following. So they're definitely different. Um, but TikTok's been fun. One other thing is that I have a newsletter now. Um, It's been really fun. Every week I send out like a bunch of trivia about a specific topic. Um, So a lot of the trivia comes from Wikipedia and then I'll be like, okay, if you're in the mood for some rabbit holes, like here you go. Yeah. Um, So it's fun to like talk about things in more depth than Instagram really lends itself to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those are like the biggest things right now. Yeah. How long, how much time do you think that you spend on Wikipedia? <laughs> okay, actually on, like, wikipedia.com, yeah. like, yeah. Um, I don't know, like a half hour a day, maybe? Okay, on that's average. not too bad. Really okay. not too bad. Before, it was more. Like, before, yeah. I would spend, um, you know, well, like a while. Like, I would really be searching for, like, the best the best Wikipedia articles for a while. Yeah. But but now I, I don't know. I feel like I have like a good repository of like good posts in my Mm -hmm. head and also people will send me some. Send me some stuff. Yeah. That Mm -hmm. makes it easier. Yeah. That's super cool. And have you ever put any monetization into your project? Or has it been all organic? Sort of. Oh, I've never paid for ads or anything. Like Mm -hmm. I've never done that. Um, but I do sell the merch Mm -hmm. and then occasionally I'll do a brand deal. Like if a brand that I really like is like, we want to pay you to mention us. Um, I'm not like closed off to that. Mm -hmm. I just feel like, I don't know. There's definitely pages that you, that just feel like advertisements. Like it's just like, okay, all these posts are just dumb ads. I would never Mm want to be like that, Mm -hmm. but I think like occasionally slipping in like some brands but also yeah, providing like eat. content Let's that go. people like <laughs> yeah I feel like that's the type of thing where it's like yeah I just I, like I'm sorry if you don't like it but yeah I'm just gonna do it yeah that's so cool and I think I I truly think that it's so cool that you have like made money off of this and are supporting Wikipedia and are supporting your school and education because yeah this is like was a quarantine hobby that you've like really turned around and it's like super exciting it's super cool it's been super fun Yeah. Um, What has been the biggest surprise for you running this Instagram page? Oh my gosh, definitely like getting the attention of people that are like famous, (laughs) like John Mayer follows and like Olivia Wilde likes it. And like, um, I'm trying to think of other people. There's just like some like, or Troy Sivan followed from a really like early time. Um, I think that's the crazy thing for me. These people that are yeah. like so untouchable, like they're like looking at the stupid captions I write. Like that part's <laughs> really crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so cool. And yeah, I bet like every time someone shares your content that's like even quasi famous, you just kind of like get a nice little boost. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, whoa, okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, Has there been like a particular effort or thing that you've done that you found that paid off the most? Um, I have to think about that. Um, 
Also, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on, but like Spotify just keeps spontaneously playing. So I'm gonna, I don't know what's going on, but like something on my computer is like really bugging out because Spotify just started playing like. Siri is trying um, to get at you. I'm so sorry. I did not anticipate okay. any of this. Things that have paid off. I think just like frequent posting, like Instagram just really rewards mm. accounts that post like every day. And even more so with TikTok, just like pushing content, like that's. I think yes. been good in terms of getting a lot of followers. Um, it's hard that. when yeah. you are a content creator to continuously push out content. Um, do you have you're, you're a student, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And do you go to school full time? Yeah, I'm a full time student. I'm like pretty busy, um, and like this is not my like number one like yeah. priority like I mean I mean it kind of is I guess but <laughs> I still have like a full-time job basically of classes yeah. um for this neuroscience degree and even if I I'm not sure you know if I'm really gonna traditionally use it like if I'm gonna actually be a neuroscientist um probably not but but still it's like this like social media hobby is still kind of a hobby um I feel like I could turn it into a job um, or I could use it as like a launch pad to do something else in media. Um, so I think like, while yes, like there are days where I'm not very inspired to put anything out there. Um, I have enough like, like ideas saved up where it's not really that big of a deal to like, I don't know, just like push something out there. Um, and when people send submissions in, that makes it really easy too. Cause it's like, yeah, a lot of the time, the things they send are in fact, like really interesting. So yeah, that makes it easier. That's awesome. That's great. It's amazing that you've grown your audience in this way. Uh, perfect. Okay. So if we want to find this Instagram page, what do we do? Where do we go? Okay. Open up your phone. <laughs> um, go to Instagram, Depths of Wikipedia. Um, there's also Depths of Amazon for funny Amazon products, Depths of Craigslist for funny Craigslist posts. Um, I'm also on TikTok. Um, sign up for my newsletter. And I think that's every that's all the big stuff. <laughs> all right. Sweet. I will put all of those links in the show notes. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. I loved chatting with you about Instagram. I have still 100,000 questions about how the algorithm works, but that's all right. I'm going to get there one day. <laughs> yeah, someday. None of us know. We're, I we're know, all right? in the dark. <laughs> I feel like I'm subject to, like, Zuck's whims, like, whatever. Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. You, yeah, you let, he's like, I'll let you know how it's going to go. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. Uh, good luck out there, but anyways this has been the hacker noon podcast if you like this episode don't forget to like it share it and subscribe to it you can find us at hacker noon on all the socials and stay weird and i'll see you on the internet Bye bye hacker noon podcast